With the soaring demand for luxury handbags and fashion accessories, snakeskins have become a prized commodity. With nearly half a million skins exported annually, beyond the wild, many farms have ventured into raising both venomous and non-venomous snakes, not just for their skins, but also for medicine and food. But what's the secret to the massive profits in this industry? From breeding these serpents to crafting their skins into high-end products, how did these farmers transform a simple trade into a multi-million dollar empire? Join us on a thrilling journey into the world of snakeskin farming and uncover the lucrative process behind this thriving market. The Snake Village. In a village in Zisikiao, China, over 160 farming families work together to raise more than 3 million snakes every year for food and medicine. This village, situated about 200 kilometers from Shanghai along a canal, is a small village that has been breeding for nearly four decades. This village, known for its snake industry, has numerous small factory farms, and its snake culture museum attracts tourists. Snakes are part of the village's informal economy kept by families in backyard holds for sale to restaurants or traditional medicine traders. Dead snakes are preserved in jars at a snake farm in Zisikiao, where breeders need permits, and breeding usually starts in April or May, with winter being the off-season. In this tranquil village in China's Zhejiang province, visitors stepping into the homes of farming families are met with thousands of some of the world's most feared creatures. Snakes, many of them poisonous. Cobras, vipers, and pythons abound in Zisikiao, appropriately called the Snake Village. Here, these reptiles are intentionally raised for use as food and in traditional medicine, contributing millions of dollars to a village that would otherwise rely solely on farming. Yang Hongchang, a 60-year-old farmer who introduced snake breeding decades ago, stated that as the number one snake village in China, raising only one kind of snake is impossible. So they are always researching many kinds of snakes and the methods of breeding different snake pieces. Snake farming in China isn't an old-fashioned industry from the past. Instead, it started based on market needs and changes. At first, farmers used to catch wild snakes and sell them to oriental medicine pharmacies. However, as wild snakes became rarer, their prices went up. Farmers started raising snakes on the farm to tackle this, making good profits. This led to the growth of snake farming in various regions. In 1985, Yang started selling snakes he caught around the area to animal vendors. He soon got worried that the wild snakes might run out, so he began learning how to breed snakes at home. He made a lot of money in just three years, inspiring many other villagers to follow his example. 160 farming families in the village breed over 3 million snakes a year. Yang started his own company to make his business more official and create a brand. They research and develop products like dried snake, snake wine, and snake powder. The province and county have approved their breeding method, recognizing them as a corporation working with farming families. Yang said their original breeding method had been approved and recognized by the province and the county. The original breeding method was just putting males and females together, but now they carefully research how snakes breed, select good females, investigate their diet, and learn how to incubate eggs for higher survival rates. Unlike any other world, the result is an industry with millions of snakes raised for food or traditional Chinese medicine. These snakes are sold domestically and exported to the United States, Germany, Japan, and Korea. How lucrative is the snakeskin industry? Snakeskin is a popular material in the fashion industry, used to create luxury items like watch straps and belts that are often sold at high prices. Despite the risks, Many people depend on farming these reptiles as their main source of income to support their families. As long as there's demand for these products, this profession will continue to thrive. A single handbag made from python leather can cost up to $115,000, highlighting its value. The industry primarily serves the fashion world, partnering with top brands like Gucci, Louis Vuitton, and Celine, and generating millions in profits. Since the 1980s, these luxury items have been prized by fashion enthusiasts, with an average price of around $5,000 per item. With steady demand, the industry has grown into a billion-dollar business, with most materials coming from Southeast Asia, sourced either from the wild or from farms. In Southeast Asian countries like Malaysia and Burma, working with snakes is crucial for some people to make a living. These countries have abundant python populations, making them the main suppliers for the fashion industry in Europe and America. 
After the snakes are captured, their hides are carefully removed with a small, sharp knife to ensure the final product is a complete, undamaged piece. Any damage can reduce its value. The use of these materials in fashion faces criticism from animal protection groups, who consider it cruel because it involves killing snakes. However, it's important to note that the process occurs after the python has died. Additionally, many are raised on farms. Chief the day is a female barely three meters long. And the demand provides a crucial income for some struggling individuals, helping them avoid poverty. Factories in this industry can process hundreds of hides each day, supplying major fashion brands. The material is expensive due to its rarity, following the basic law of supply and demand. It's also strong and durable, making it ideal for everyday fashion accessories. In many places, trading these products is illegal, so facilities handling them need special licenses to operate. These licenses allow them to supply fashion factories. Shoes made from this leather are tough yet soft enough to fit comfortably, offering a better feel. The material is also waterproof and doesn't easily crack, even in different weather conditions. Given how lucrative the industry is, how far back does snake farming go? History of snake skin farming. The high demand for python products today doesn't mean the industry is new. Humans have farmed animals for thousands of years, leading to the domestication of many species we see today. Recently, there's been a rise in farming wild animals to meet the growing market demand for meat, skins, pets, and medicines. Asia's largest python, the reticulated python, has been harvested from the wild for its skins for nearly 80 years. Both reticulated and Burmese pythons are widespread across Asia and remain relatively common in their habitats. These snakes are among the world's largest, and their adaptability and life history have helped them survive even with continued harvesting. Captive breeding of pythons began in the 1980s, but has expanded rapidly in the last two decades due to rising market demand and restrictions on wild python harvesting. More households have joined the trade in recent years, attracted by the income opportunities it offers. In Vietnam, for example, captive breeding of pythons also started in the 1980s and became the main source of production after laws were passed to protect wild pythons due to their declining populations. By 1998, both Burmese and reticulated pythons were considered critically endangered in Vietnam, and wild harvesting was banned. In recent years, the industry has grown again, partly due to media promotion and provincial government support, which view it as a good income opportunity. Thousands of households in Vietnam now rely on the international trade in python skins to make a living. According to the CITES trade database, Vietnam exported 146,500 Burmese python skins and 139,200 reticulated python skins to countries like Singapore, Italy, China, and Germany in 2012. According to FPD records, there are 186 registered farms across Vietnam, with 413 located in the southern provinces around the Mekong Delta. Additionally, there are hundreds of smaller unregistered farms raising pythons, similar to how people raise backyard chickens. Most of these are satellite farms that focus on raising hatchling pythons to market size. Python farming provides income for many people around the world and is promoted in areas where traditional farming is less practical. From an economic viewpoint, wildlife farming offers more stability, control, and predictability than harvesting animals from the wild and can improve consistency in products like reptile skins. So how are these wild animals raised for economic benefits? Snake farming. Like any other livestock farm, snake farms carefully choose their snake breeds. After mating, it takes snakes about 30 to 30 days to lay eggs, and each female can lay between 12 and 21 eggs at a time. The incubation process is simple. First, place a layer of soil in a foam box and keep the humidity between 25% and 30%. Then, add a thin layer of sand and carefully position the snake eggs on top. In about 70 to 75 days, the eggs will hatch and baby snakes will emerge. Regular checks are important during incubation. If any eggs are damaged, they should be removed immediately. Raising snakes requires careful attention to temperature and humidity. The cage design should provide a cool environment in the summer and warmth in the winter. Since snakes can suffer from extreme temperatures, each farm should have many cages, with only one snake per cage. Snakes should only be paired during the breeding season. Cages can be built with bricks, and doors can be made of wood or iron mesh. Cages should be opened only for feeding and drinking to prevent poisonous snakes from escaping 
and posing a danger to people or pets. The type of food given to snakes depends on their species. Venomous snakes eat water snakes, frogs, and chicken meat, while other snakes can have fresh meat or frog meat. Caution is needed when feeding poisonous snakes. Aside from skin production, why again are these reptiles raised? Reasons why snakes are farmed. Each year, China uses over 10,000 tons of live snakes. Health products and medicinal wine made from snakes are also very popular. In Shanghai and Guangdong province, eating snake meat is a common tradition. A survey revealed that Shanghai has more than 6,000 special restaurants serving dishes made with pit vipers, cobras, freshwater snakes, and sea snakes. These restaurants use around 4,000 tons of snakes every year. One supplier in Shanghai sells two tons of snakes daily, with cobras costing about $14 per kilogram and pit vipers around $42 per kilogram. On menus, snake meat is often called dragon meat. Many of the snakes served in Chinese restaurants come from the snake repository in Wuzhou, Guangxi province, where over one million snakes are raised each year. This place is a popular tourist spot for groups from Taiwan and Hong Kong, who sometimes watch special snake versus catfish fights. Eating snake meat is an old practice. In the 1320s, Friar Oderic described it in Canton, saying, there are monstrous great serpents that the people catch and eat. A feast with serpents is nothing special to them. There's even a joke that if Adam and Eve were Chinese, they would have eaten the snake instead of the apple. Tourists who order snake dishes in southern China often see the reptile being killed, skinned, and drained of blood right in front of them. The snake restaurant in Canton offers a variety of dishes, including fricasseed snake with cat meat, snake breast meat stuffed with shrimp, stir-fried colorful shredded snakes, and braised snake slices with chicken liver. A meal for four usually costs under $30. The Flying Dragon Snake Farm in Panyu features dishes like snake skin with peppers, snake semen liqueur, baked cobra, and a five-step snake. The farm also has a snake stage show, sells traditional snake-based medicines, and includes attractions like a cobra petting zoo, a bath with hundreds of snakes, and a sanatorium offering extended snake diet therapy. Snakes are valuable animals, often called jinang, for their high nutritional and medicinal benefits. Different parts of a snake, such as its meat, bile, and bones, are used for various purposes. Snake meat is especially prized for its rich nutrients that support health and longevity. Snake bile and bones are important in traditional oriental medicine. Python meat, in particular, is a nutritious source of protein for locals. It is rich in calcium and other nutrients beneficial for bones and joints. Eating python meat or other products can help prevent diseases related to bones and joints. Additionally, python meat boosts beauty due to its high collagen content, which helps keep skin smooth, youthful, and vibrant. Many cosmetics use python ingredients to enhance health and beauty. Qin Lung Fei, who calls himself the king of snakes, owns a snake farm and treats snakes like friends. Sadly, a food stall vendor from Hainan Island learned the hard way about the dangers of snakes when he was fatally bitten by two snakeheads he had just beheaded. Snake venom is highly valued and known as liquid gold because of its unique properties. It can help with blood clotting and prevent cancer. It is used to make anti-venom, a special medicine for treating snake bites, and to produce painkillers and blood clotting agents. In modern medicine, snake venom is essential for creating drugs and serums making it a significant source of income for farmers through snake breeding. Experts collect this venom from some of the deadliest snakes in Australia to create life-saving medicine. Each snake's venom is unique and very dangerous. After milking the venom, it is frozen and later turned into a powder for easier transport and longer shelf life. This venom is used to produce anti-venom, which is crucial for treating snake bites of anti-venom, which eventually will save lives. So the work that Carl and Mara are doing here on a daily basis. Horses play a role in this process. They receive small doses of venom to produce antibodies, which are then collected from their blood to make anti-venom. Despite the life-saving benefits of anti-venom, many people, especially in rural areas, find it hard to access it in time. In places like India and Sub-Saharan Africa, Snake bite deaths are common due to limited access to effective treatment. So scientists are working on making antivenom cheaper and more accessible by developing new methods, such as producing antibodies in the lab. This could reduce the need for horses and use less venom, helping provide better treatment to those in remote areas who need it most. Challenges in snake farming. 
before the coronavirus pandemic, China traded between 7,000 and 9,000 metric tons of snakes each year, according to Reuters. A study from Wuhan University in December 2019 suggested that intensive snake farming could have spread parasites and diseases. This study looked at snakes from Wuhan's seafood markets, including the one linked to the coronavirus outbreak. However, Yu Shuiji, a professor at Wuhan University, told Reuters that he does not believe snakes were the source of the coronavirus. They are often used in soups or wines to boost the immune system. With the rising demand for snake products in restaurants and medicine shops, Zisikiao villagers have seen their incomes increase significantly thanks to their involvement in breeding snakes. A villager named Yang Xiubang has been raising snakes at home for over 20 years, and he noted that his annual income has steadily grown due to the high demand for traditional Chinese medicine. Snake products from Zisikiao are now sold worldwide, including in the United States, Germany, Japan, and South Korea. In Zhejiang's busy city of Hangzhou, the Hangzhou Y Company sells various snake products, including powders. Zisikiao's thriving snake business has become a model for other rural areas, leading to increased competition among breeders from different villages. However, raising snakes is risky. Snake farmers have shared that they've been bitten by dangerous snakes and only survived due to anti-venom injections. Another villager, Yang Wenfu, stopped raising venomous vipers after being bitten earlier in his career and now avoids them. When the coronavirus pandemic started in the early 2020, Zisikiao had to reduce or stop its snake farming due to a wildlife trade ban. David Stanway of Reuters reported that, since late January, efforts to control the coronavirus epidemic have forced Zisikiao residents to stop wildlife trading, their main source of income. The empty wooden cages that once held snakes are now deserted, and the word snake has even been removed from the sign of a local specialty restaurant. In January, snake breeding permits in Zisikiao were canceled, as confirmed by Yang Heyong, another snake breeder. No one in the village was breeding snakes during the epidemic. Animal welfare groups support China's wildlife ban, including the restrictions on snake farming, and are urging the government to make it permanent. They stress that no specific species should be blamed. While some Zisikiao residents hope for eased restrictions after the crisis, officials say the ban will remain in place. Even if new licenses are issued later, the rules will be much stricter. Lu Jinliang, vice chief of the local village Communist Party, stated, even after the epidemic ends, it will still not be allowed. They will need to switch professions and raise other animals. Aside from policies, there are other factors that also affect the practice. These challenges mainly involve temperature control, disease management, and hygiene. If these issues aren't handled well, they can lead to serious losses and make it hard for these farms to grow. Temperature control is the biggest challenge. Pythons are ectothermic, meaning they rely on external heat to regulate their body temperature. If the temperature changes too much, it can make pythons sick, cause stress, and lead to problems with reproduction. Small-scale farmers often struggle to keep the temperature steady because they have limited resources. This can lead to the loss of breeding females or eggs, which affects their ability to expand and maintain their farm. For example, a small python farm might find it hard to keep temperatures consistent. Unlike larger farms that use advanced climate control systems or have the advantage of sunlight, these small farms don't have these luxuries. This results in significant losses from temperature fluctuations. To tackle these problems, small farmers could benefit from practical training on affordable heating systems, insulation, and temperature monitoring devices. These measures could help stabilize their environment and reduce temperature-related losses. Disease management is another major challenge. Respiratory infections are common, especially in smaller farms where temperature control and ventilation might be poor. Larger farms may have better infrastructure, like advanced ventilation systems. With the soaring demand for luxury handbags and fashion accessories, snake skins have become a prized commodity, with nearly half a million skins exported annually. Beyond the wild, many farms have ventured into raising both venomous, non-venomous snakes, not just for their skins, but also for medicine and food. But what's the secret to the massive profits in this industry? From breeding these serpent skins into high-end products, how did these farmers transform a simple trade into a multi-million dollar? Join us on a thrilling journey into the world of snakeskin farming and uncover the lucrative process behind this thriving market. The Snake Village. In a village in Zisikiao, China, 
Over 160 farming families work together to raise more than 3 million snakes every food and medicine. This village, situated about 200 kilometers from Shanghai along a canal, is a small village that has been breeding for nearly four decades. This village, known for its snake industry, has numerous small factory farms, and its snake culture museum attracts tourists. Snakes are part of the informal economy, kept by families in backyard holds for sale to restaurants or traditional medicine traders. Dead snakes served in jars at a snake farm in Zisikiao, where breeders need permits, and breeding usually starts in April or May, being the off-season. In this tranquil village in China's Zhejiang province, visitors to the homes of farming families are met with thousands of some of the world's most feared creatures. Snakes, men poisonous. Cobras, vipers, and pythons abound in Zisikiao, appropriately called the Snake Village. Here, these reptiles are intentionally raised for use as food and in traditional medicine, contributing millions of dollars to a village that would rely solely on farming. Yang Hongchang, a 60-year-old farmer who introduced snake breeding decades ago, stated that, as the number one village in China, raising only one kind of snake is impossible. So they are always researching many kinds of snakes, and the method of breeding different snake pieces. Snake farm fashioned industry from the past. Instead, it started based on market needs and changes. At first, farmers used to catch wild snakes and sell them to oriental medicine pharmacies. However, as wild snakes became rarer, their prices went up. Farmers started raising snakes on the farm to tackle this, making good profit. This led to the growth of snake farming in various regions. In 1985, Ying started selling snakes he caught around the area to animal vent. He soon got worried that the wild snakes might run out, so he began learning how to breed snakes at home. He made a lot of money in just three years, inspired many other villagers to follow his example. 100 families in the village breed over 3 million snakes a year. Yang started his own company to make his business more official and create a brand. They research and develop products like dried snake, snake wine, and snake. The province and county have approved their breeding method, recognizing them as a corporation working with farming families. Yang said their original breeding method had been approved and recognized by the province and the county. The original breeding method was males and females together, but now, they carefully research how snakes breed, collect good females, investigate their diet, learn how to incubate eggs for higher survival rates. In any other world, the result is an industry with millions of snakes raised for food or traditional chicken. These snakes are sold domestically and exp United States, Germany, Japan, and Korea. How lucrative is the snake skin industry? That's just really good. It reminds me, if anything, of turtle. Snakeskin is a popular material in the fashionery items like watch straps and belts that are often sold at places. Despite the risks, many people depend on farming these reptiles as their main source of income to support their families. As long as demand for these products, this profession will continue to thrive. A single handbag made thon leather can cost up to $115,000, highlighting its value. The industry primarily serves the fashion world, Louis Vuitton and Celine, millions in profits. Since the 1980s, these luxury items have been prized by fashion enthusiasts, with an average price of around $5,000 per item. With steady demand, the industry has grown into a billion-dollar business, with most from Southeast Asia, sourced either from the wild or from farms. In Southeast Asian countries like Malaysia and Burma, Working with snakes is crucial for some people to make a living. These countries have a python populations, making them the main suppliers for the fashion industry in Europe and America. After the snakes are captured, their hides are carefully removed with a small sharp knife to ensure the final is a complete, undamaged piece. Any damage can reduce its value. The use of these materials in faces criticism from animal protection groups, who consider it cruel because it involves killing snakes. However, it's important to note that the process occurs after the pythide. Additionally, many are raised on farms. Demand provides a crucial income for some struggling individuals, helping them avoid poverty. Factory can process hundreds of hides each day, supplying major fashion brands. The material is expensive due to its rarity, following the basic law of supply and demand. 
It's also strong and durable, making it ideal for everyday fashion accessories. In many places, trading these products is illegal, so facilities handling them need special licenses to operate. These licenses allow them to supply fashion fact. Shoes made from this leather are tough, yet soft enough to fit comfortably, off feel. The material is also waterproof and doesn't easily crack, even in different weather conditions. Given how lucrative he is, how far back does snake farming go? History of Snake Skin Farming The high demand for python products today doesn't mean the industry is new. Humans have farmed animals for thousands, leading to the domestication of many species we see today. Recently, there's been a rise in farming to meet the growing market demand for meat, skins, pets, and medicines. Asia's largest python, the retitid python, has been harvested from the wild for its skins for nearly 80 years. Both reticulate and Burmese pythons are widespread across Asia and remain relatively common in their habitat. These snakes are among the world's largest, and their adaptability and life history have helped them survive even with continued harvesting. Captive breeding of pythons began in the 1980s but has expanded rapidly in the last two decades due to rising market demand and restrictions on wild python harvesting. More households in the trade in recent years, attracted by the income opportunities it offers. In Vietnam, for captive breeding of pythons also started in the 1980s and became the main source of production after laws were passed to protect wild pythons due to their declining population. By 1998, both Burmese and reticulated pythons were considered critically endangered in Vietnam, and wilding was banned. In recent years, the industry has grown again, partly due to media promotion and provincial government support, which view it as a good income opportunity. Thousands of households in Vietnam now rely on the international trade in Pythites trade database, Vietnam 500 Burmese python skins, and 139,000. 200 reticulated python skins countries like Singapore, Italy, China, Germany in 2012. According to FPD records, there are 106 registered farms across Vietnam, with 413 located in the southern province around the Mekong Delta. Additionally, there are holler unregistered farms raising pythons, similar to how people raise backyard chickens. Most of these are satellite farms that focus on raising hatchling pythons to market size. Python farming provides income for many people around the world and is promoted as where traditional farming is less practical. From an economic viewpoint, wildlife farming offers more stability, control, and predictability than harvest animals from the wild and can improve consistency in products like reptile skins. So how are these wild animals raised for benefits? snake farming. Like any other livestock farm, snake farms carefully choose their snake breeds. Eating, it takes snakes about 30 to 30 days to lay eggs, and each female can lay between 12 and 21 eggs at a time. The incubation process is simple. First, place a layer of soil in a foam box the humidity between 25% and 30%. Then, add a thin layer of sand and carefully position the snake eggs on top. In about 70 to 75 days, the eggs will hatch and baby snakes will emerge. Regular checks are important during incubation. If eggs are damaged, they should be removed immediately. Rix requires careful attention to temperature and humidity. The cage design should provide a cool environment in the summer and warmth in the winter. Snakes can suffer from extreme temperatures. Each farm should have many cages with only one snake per cage. Snakes should only be paired during the breeding season. Cages can be built with bricks, and doors can be made wood or iron mesh. Cages should be opened only for feeding and drinking to prevent poisonous snakes from escaping and posing a danger to people or pets. The type of food given to snakes depends on their species. Miss snakes eat water snakes, frogs, and chicken meat, while other snakes can have fresh meat or frog meat. Caution is needed when feeding poisonous snakes. Aside from skin production, why again are these reptiles raised? Reasons Why Snakes Are Farmed Each year, China uses over 10,000 tons of live snakes. Health products and medicine